Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, the very last program of 2019. I've been doing this for, oh years, seven, eight years, something like I have to look that up. I'm not quite sure. So long, I've forgotten how long we've doing, been doing a radio show, but uh, it has been a good garden year. In fact, this week, I was trying to get ready before this storm hit, the rain and the snows came. I wanted to finish up a few garden things outside. Sunday and Monday, well, Monday morning, were so nice that oh, I'll just I'll just knock out a few few projects. I got Almost all of my perennials cut back. So that is the those plants that come back year after year, mainly the flowers and the vegetables. So asparagus patch, cut all the way back. All my sages, uh, artemisias, mums. In fact, I noticed the mums are already starting to grow. They, they're out of the ground emerging. There may be a, an inch out of the ground. The asters have already started to grow. Uh, Centranthus or Jupiter's beard, a native perennial, already starting to grow. So they're wanting to go. I think part of that, they got tricked. Remember that about three weeks ago, it was really cold and wet and snowy. And then it's just been, it's been warm. It's been nice. And now it's stormy again. But I think that tricked thing is going, oh, it's cold. Die back to the ground. It's wet. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's warm. Let's start growing. This feels good. And so hopefully this, this, if you've got some perennials that are starting to emerge, I mean, January, we're a couple days away, the crocus will start coming up immediately. Uh, daffodils, they'll start emerging within days, weeks at most. As they emerge, uh, I don't worry about them. They're, they're, they're on an autopilot program. A lot of folks will start calling the garden center going, oh, my daffodils are already up out of the ground. My tulips are already out of the ground. Should I be worried about this snowstorm coming? Nope. They're used to that. They're, they're okay with that. Uh, they've got enough antifreeze in them that, that keeps them from freezing back down to the ground, and they're good to go. Main thing is don't trample all over them while you're having snowball fights with the kids out back. Uh, that, that just keep them where they don't break. That new growth doesn't break off and you're fine. Uh, crocus will start blooming into January. I mean, February. Daffodils are mid-February, into February. I mean, we're talking, it's, it's starting. I looked at my uh, flowering trees, like red buds, the, the uh, crepe, uh, not crepe myrtles, uh, crab apples. They have huge buds. Your lilacs should be loaded with not just small buds, but those at the very tips of those branches that have huge diamond kind of triangular shaped flower buds. They'll be kind of colored, kind of a purpley color. That's good. In fact, this is one thing to watch to advise your gardeners. They'll be in these mow and blow guys. They just come in and start whacking everything off. Well, they'll start whacking on your on your quince and your lilacs and your forsythia, and they'll just whack off all those flower buds. And it won't kill the plant. It's fine. The pruning itself won't, won't affect that plant, but you'll lose all the flowers. So those buds have been forming for three, four months now. And if you go in and, and prune them that, that branch back, you've taken back the, the height, which is what you wanted. Then you took all the flowers. Usually with spring blooming things, we go ahead and we, we prune back after they're done blooming. So you'll let your quince start blooming in February, your camellias, uh, your forsythias, and you'll prune them back in March. You'll let your lilacs bloom in, in March, first part of April, and then you'll prune them back in April. Uh, so you, right after they're done blooming, you go ahead and prune. You've got permission. Go for it. Uh, anything that blooms in the summer, rows of Sharon's, your, your crepe myrtles, all those fall-colored plants like uh, amber maples, your Japanese maples, all of your fruit trees can be pruned back right now. Now through, yep, it's a big window. Uh, take, I mean, I know we're enjoying it. We're, we're kind of detoxing after all the holiday celebrations. Um, all of us, except for the, the, the Jewish friends, you're deep into Hanukkah. I think we're on number day six or seven. It goes through, uh, what is that, Sunday evening. 
So you're, you're still thick into it. Uh, but the rest was detoxing. So try to try to get back to our time for a holiday wait to go off now. <laughs> but when you're all done, you feel like you want to get outdoors. It's a nice day. Anytime between now and March, go ahead and, and, and slowly just work your way through it. Uh, so kind of that's I've gotten all my perennials done. So I took the lawnmower of all things. I wanted the thyme lawn, which looked good. It's green. It's not in bloom, but it's green or or that dark blue-green color to it. So it's great looking. But all the leaves have gotten in there, and it just looked kind of trashy. Okay, that's it. I got company coming over. We are going to clean this thing up. So I raked it out a little bit, and then I took the lawnmower, just sucked up those leaves out of there, and gave it kind of a bit, bit of a haircut. Well, once you're committed that far, you just go ahead and go all the way in, Took the lawnmower to the backyard, which is down about a flight and a half of stairs. Just slowly, one step at a time, went to the back. And then I've got many, many raised beds. So my, this is on a classic Prescott mountain mountaintop overlooking the Granite Dells, up in the Prescott Lakes area, Eagle Ridge, that, that whole Rosser Street looking down. It's a beautiful valley. Well, it's pretty vistas, but difficult gardening. And so you gotta you gotta be methodical about it. Well, I was having this heavy clay soil, I couldn't garden in it. And so I put rate retaining block at the below hill and I just backfilled with great potting soil. And so I've just got these tiered gardens all the way down. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven or eight of these. Nine, ten. Ten just off the top of my head and probably more. So I just took the lawnmower at each bed. They're small, 10 by 10, 15 by 15. Just said, okay, perennials. Get ready on your mark, go. And I just, it's an electric, had it plugged in, electric lawnmower. Just went over it and just, just, just powered through. Uh, so the sages, the flocks, what else? The, 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 the iris, all the grasses. I have lots of, lots of ornamental grasses. Cut them back. Uh, except for the bear grass, that one I kept up. They're green. If it looked green, I didn't cut it. If it was brown, it got, it got mowed back. Uh, I'll do that for everything except for maybe pampas grass. Pampas grass is too big for for a mower. You've got to get you got to get in with hedgers or something else with that. That's that great big grass with the plumes on it. That one I'll I'll, I'll prune back a little later. They've got a few plumes left. I'll let this snowstorm or two kind of really beat them up, and then they, when I just can't stand it anymore, I'll whack them right off. Usually with hedgers and pruners and shears, that kind of stuff. So you're, you've got permission. Go prune everything except for the the spring blooming shrubs mainly. I also held off on roses. I find they do better when you prune them back in March. I also find salvia gregii or autumn sage. It performs better when you prune them back in March. Certain things... I'll wait on, but most of my perennials have been completely cut back. If in doubt, stop by the garden center, talk to us. We'll tell you which ones do, which ones don't. If you're just not sure. And then once you know, that's why we keep garden journals. We just walk our way through. Every year, it's the same. You never really have to change that much. The other little bit tidbit I can give you, uh, my Russian sage. I've cut them all back. It's a beautiful four-foot-tall, spiky blue shrub. Um, it needs to be cut back pretty heavy every single fall. I cut it back to about, I don't know, 18 inches off the ground, but then I looked for really woody, barky kind of branches coming up. Most of them are supple, first-year wood. You can tell there's a couple branches that shoot up that look old. They look scaly. I went, okay, I'm going to thin those out. You want to take some of those old branches out so you've got vibrant, you've got better flowers on vibrant new wood. I do the same thing for salvia when I finally do prune that back in uh, salvia gregia, when I prune that back in March. I'll look for the same thing. Roses, I'll do the same thing. I'm looking for some big canes that are just barky. I don't want those. Better roses come on vibrant new vines, not old branches. So I'll go in and strategically go through and cr- cut those things back. And then I fertilize them. It's a good time to fertilize your evergreens. If ever there's a great, this is a great time to put down wildflowers, to fertilize those evergreens, keep them, keep them green. If you've had trouble with uh, roses or with flowers in the spring, it's time now to fertilize them right now around this new year. You'll get better growth. Got a lot in store for you. Lisa's coming in with your 
questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood, the plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally, or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener, green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And welcome back. We've got Lisa Waters Lane in the studio for you. She comes each week and just has your garden questions. And so welcome into the studio. It's been a a nice Christmas. Yes, very nice. Grandkids are here. Mm -hmm. Activities galore. The house is not as pristine as it used to be, (laughs) but it will be soon. It's nice time. Our kids live all over the country. Yeah. You want to explain where they're at and what they're doing or what's... Well, we've got a couple in Austin, Texas, and we've got our son in El Paso, stationed in the military, and our daughter, Kinsey, over in um, Pasadena, home for the holidays, between school breaks. She's finishing up her last year of college. Wahoo. Yeah, not college. So, grad school. Grad school. Undergraduate. Yeah. This is post, post-work post right. stuff. She wants to be right. a therapist. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So it's fun to have them all home. It's fun to have the grandkids. You got to remember, grandkids, there's going to be stuff everywhere. <laughs> no, it's part of the... When, you, when you're traveling, you're yeah. packing heavy all yeah. the time. They're, this is little kids, like one year's, you know, five years, eight years. Yeah. This is like packing. Yeah. You got to take all the accoutrements with you. Oh, it's not like they're bad kids. It's just kids. Yeah. Even your own kids home, they... they they consume. They're worse than, a lot. than dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is, sounds bad over the airwaves. It's one of the few huh? times our trash can actually gets full I know, anymore. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just pack. You don't. You don't realize. We barely fill a trash can up yeah. for big big ones to go out on the street. Mm-hmm. They come in within two days. Boom, fill. What are we going to do with the rest of this? <laughs> oh man, but it's fun, worthwhile. So, garden questions. Yeah. Uh, what is going on? Well, not much. In this time of year. Okay, that doesn't surprise. Everyone's indoors <laughs> drinking eggnog, and I don't blame them. Yeah, plus it's been kind of weathery, stormy, yeah. windy. It's, it's just it's, yeah, it's winter. It's a, it's like Christmas, like <laughs> yeah. a holiday Hanukkah season grand finale for the there end of the year. When's Festivus? Festivus, <laughs> <laughs> you going all Seinfeld on me? I think that's one you can have Festivus whenever you want. <laughs> Now, you know our millennial minus, they, they have never watched Seinfeld. That's, That's like a 1990s true. show, isn't it? It's kind of old Seinfeld, school. Seinfeld, I think it started before the 90s, Did it? didn't it? I, I, I'm going to have to get the Google that. machine out I and know. take a look. Hey, Google, <laughs> when did Seinfeld start playing? <laughs> okay, we, we digress okay. totally. Question. We'll skip Festivus for now. But Kevin would like to know... Is it okay to put your Christmas tree into your compost pile? Well, sure it is. Yeah. Now, if you could chip it. Now, I'm thinking cut Christmas tree, right? Yeah. That's a, yeah, not yeah, a plastic yeah. or no. metal or a Festivus aluminum <laughs> one. We're talking a cut tree. Yes. Absolutely. The challenge is needles break down very, very slowly, whether it's pine needles from Ponderosa or off mm-hmm. of a fir tree, like a noble fir, Fraser fir. They break down slowly. So the smaller the chips... The, the better, the better they'll actually break mm. down. So if you were to send your tree through a chipper, that is excellent stuff. It just takes a long time to break down. Really what I suggest 
is chip it and then use it as a top dressing Mm. on top of the gardens, on top of the flower beds, around the roses. That's a better way to go because it does. Pine trees break down slower, especially fir. Mm -hmm. Uh, They break down slower than other, let's say, kitchen waste in the compost pile. So it'll take longer and it'll frustrate you because that uh, lettuce is broken down already. It's like three weeks out and then pine trees are still composting nine months later. Either keep them separate or just use it as a top dressing somewhere else, and you'll find okay. you'll be much happier is what I'd suggest. Mm-hmm. If if you're really getting into woody materials and you've got a compost pile, the key thing is keep it moist. In the winter, it's not as hard as, say, April, May, June. It's hard to keep a pump. You might even put a dripper on it or keep it, keep it hydrated, mm-hmm. help it break down faster, but not gooey. Yeah. And then if you don't have a lot of lawn clippings, which we don't here, right. That's your that's your nitrogen source. So if you just have leaves and eggshells, it's going to break down really slow. You may need a compost starter mm-hmm. help it kind of front load it. Sure. And the best compost starter I've ever found, I mean, just bar none, our uh, all-purpose plant food, the mm-hmm. seven four four. Uh, it's mm-hmm. got it's got manures in it, so chicken poops. Uh, it's got. Uh, it's got cottonseed meal, which is very acidic, helps things break down fast. Sprinkle a little bit of that on top, mm-hmm. and it will just activate that that thing. Even in January, even in midwinter, okay. it'll activate that and get you going faster, mm-hmm. especially if you've got big, chunky, woody kind of stuff in the compost pile. Okay. All righty. More well, than that, you ever wanted to know about well, compost. <laughs> kind of leads into our next question from Diane. She wants to know, is it okay to use pine needles as a top dressing mulch? Yeah, it's tremendous. You know, in the South, that's their premium mulch. Really? They use pine mulch. A two to three inch layer is extremely good. Even better than I would say wood chips um, or bark. It's mm-hmm. better than that. The negative with pine needles, let's say if you've got a forest, you got a neighbor with a huge ponderosa pine, it's always throwing off pine cones right. and needles. The, the, the rule says a two to three inch layer, layer over the garden helps to keep the weeds out because they can't get the sun, helps keep, to keep the moisture in. There's a lot of positive. If you go above that, say four, five, six, eight, sometimes under, underneath a pine tree, a ponderosa or scotch pine or pinion that hasn't been ever raked up, you can have over a foot of pine needles. Yeah. This is a defensive mechanism that the tree uses to suffocate everything out so nothing can grow underneath its root space except it. So it's a very defensive uh, thing the tree is naturally doing. So you got to clean that up every once in a while so that you only have a one to two, three inch layer at Don't most. Let it get too deep. Yeah. Otherwise, it, it interlocks. The needles kind of interlock each other and it creates almost a turtle shell. So the water will actually run off out of your soil, away from your trees, and not get down into the soil. So it's kind of tricky. And then there's a fire hazard if you're mm-hmm. the wildland interface, fire mitigation areas. So it's just wise yeah. to keep some of it on there, but not too much. Very good. I, I During the cleanup days in May, uh, they'll go into neighborhoods with a lot of pine trees. They'll go, hey, bring a truckload over here. I'll take it, and I put it around the whole landscape, and mm-hmm. it just keeps the weeds down, breaks down slow. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Sounds good. Well, our next question is from Neil. Lucky guy is going to be gone for about a month. He's traveling. He wants to know if he waters his landscape really well before he leaves. Will his trees and shrubs be okay for a month? Yeah, it should be fine. Especially if you're watering before you leave. Midwinter, I mean, you should be good to go. Uh, and then pray for you know a snowstorm or mm-hmm. rain or something, some sort of natural event. And in the mountains of Arizona, you never quite know if you're going to have moisture in the winter or not that's part of the challenge so i would say turn that system on hydrate it like you would in in when it's hot in june and then just go off and and enjoy your trip i'm jealous did did he happen to say where he's going he did not probably someplace warm and i know tropical (laughs) probably gonna go visit the kids in minnesota (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Who knows? So that bring you. I think you've said it before, but I never remember how many inches of snow equal an inch of yeah. of moisture. So the general rule kind of depends on how wet the snow is, but as a rule, six inches of snow equates to approximately one inch of rain. That'd be a same equivalent. So, mm-hmm. and then an inch of rain. This is kind of interesting. Never thought about this. But an inch of rain will penetrate into the soil about 
six inches into the ground. So yeah. I guess there's a direct correlation between <laughs> snow and how far it goes down. Yeah. So if you get an eight inch snow, it probably goes down about eight inches into the ground. Right. If you got a foot snow, it probably goes down a foot. And so if you're thinking of, if you got a skiff of snow, you didn't water at all, just barely goes in a you know, quarter inch or whatever, mm-hmm. blows away. Right. So that that's something to help you figure out, has my landscape had enough water or not? Mm-hmm. And you need to water a deep soak about twice a month. Just pick a nice day. If you haven't seen snow and rain for a couple of weeks, give it another dose. And that's what's going to ensure that your plants, your especially fruit trees, roses, uh, lilacs, forsythia, things that bloom early in spring, anything that blooms like like uh, crab apples, mm-hmm. they're forming their flower buds right now and they're getting plump. So you want to keep that tree hydrated so those flowers don't get dry and then it gets real cold, it'll freeze those off so you won't have as good a blossom the next year. Right. So it's usually either you didn't water enough in winter or the plant is starving for some food is the reason they don't perform that well in mm-hmm. the spring so yeah anyway great questions this week especially in between the holidays what a great thing good <laughs> job folks hey ken and lisa lane and the mountain gardeners we got more we'll be right back you're listening to ken lane aka the mountain gardener ken can be found throughout the week in prescott at waters garden center listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens these tulips are delicious we're the cutest mule deers, and we just ate Mrs. Smith's flowers. <laughs> we avoid Mrs. Johnson's because she has native plants from Waters Garden Center. She's got bright red sage, sunny blanket flower, hot pink gara, and a lot more. They grow like crazy in local soil, and she hardly ever has to water them. Hummingbirds and bees love natives, but they taste awful to deer. I sure hope Mrs. Smith doesn't figure that out. Go native. Waters Garden Center. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers, with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. Now, I can say a a number of customers have been coming in with little flying gnats in their house. So they'll gather around you while you're watching your iPad. They're attracted to that light to the windows. Uh, Generally, they're coming in where you're living, so it's a little bit warmer room. And it's a fungus gnat, a little tiny gnat. You can barely see the doggone thing. It's like you sense something, so you swat at it, and you're getting this thing out of here, and there's three or four of them. They're driving you crazy. That is, and they're indoors. That's a fungus gnat. Uh, They live inside the roots of your houseplants. So they probably came in uh, last November, so a month, month and a half ago. And they've just been slowly living in that soil and now about the time the new year starts they start to mature so they've got a a larva stage is a maggot it's a little white worm that lives in the soil eats the roots on your house plants and they tend to mature until about now and then they come out and they start bugging you and they're out to do one thing they only live for a few days they're looking to lay more eggs they're in that usually that same house plant they'll come up make whoopee lay more eggs or they'll move to the next house plant or the next plant in that grouping. They don't tend to migrate around the house a lot. They're very social. They like to stick tight around that area, those first few plants. If you see this, if you've got little gnats, there's only one thing it could be. If something's flying around your computer screen, your laptop, uh, you just notice them while you're watching TV, that is going to be a fungus gnat. Only one thing does that, and it shows up now, and it seems to be a little bit early I think it was that warmth. Something happened where they just emerged all of a sudden. Or there was a crop of poinsettias or some sort of holiday plant. Everyone took one home from 
the box store and they were all infected. You took it home and went, oh, here you go. It's so pretty there. And then it spreads to the next plant in that room. So kind of look for it. It's a concern. They can kill your plants. They can kill off an entire room. I've seen them stress out from bulbs, you know, narcissus to Christmas cactus to dracaenas, pothos, your, your traditional you know, palms. They seem to be indiscriminate. They want to come into the soil, live in that moisture. They're looking for new root hairs. They eat that for, for a few weeks and they come up, fly around for a few days, lay more eggs, and they, they just build. They get worse and worse and worse. Something to watch for. Don't ignore it if you see it. If you don't see it, great. Don't worry about it. But be aware of it. Just know what to look for. Um, if you see that, there's a couple avenues you can take. What I do, if we ever get them in our houseplant room, we are like, we shock and awe. We are not going to have these. We come after you with everything we got. And we'll treat the roots, just the soil, with a systemic uh, granule. It's like a, it's like a little, it's like, it looks like a fertilizer. But you water it, it activates it. And so the soil, it goes right through the soil and kills off the maggots. You kill off that worm you won't have issues. There might be a few stragglers, you know, uh, stragglers roaming around, but they'll die within just a few days. For us, we'll do that, water it in, and then we'll also put, it's called a sticky white fly trap. It's a little yellow piece of paper. It's kind of cheesy. You could almost make your own, uh, but you put it on a lollipop stick and you stick it in the back of the, ground, back of the uh, plant. And what happens is that particular insect is highly motivated by light. So they come up out of the ground, they're going, oh, where am I at? I've lived in my entire, you know, six weeks underground. And I'm out looking around. It goes, oh, go to the light. Go to the light. As so they start flying toward, they get stuck on this sticky white trap. Very easy. You could almost monitor the entire population with just sticky white fly traps or yellow traps. Um, but it seems like the systemic really, it really knocks them back like immediately. And once you treat it, you're probably done. You, you won't have to retreat. And a good way to, to look at that is look at your sticky white fly trap. That little trap, if you see little bugs, if, the, if that little white gnat gets stuck on there, it's kind of wings kind of go dink, like, like a bird hit the front grill of your Mack truck. It looks like that. Only there'll be dozens of them. It's an easy way to monitor if you've got a problem or not. It's unique at taking out that particular insect highly and, and white flies. Obviously, that's the number one way we treat with white flies, but it's highly effective on fungus gnats as well. While you're looking at your plants, uh, watching them, look for white uh, woolly apple aphid. There's woolly aphids on, on house plants, certain ones. Cacti can get kind of a little aphid on there. Look for things. It's, it's time to start. It's been, been a few you know, a couple months since you've really talked to your house plants. It's a time to monitor them, watch them, treat them, fertilize them, and then also to clean off the foliage. There's a leaf shine we sell at the nursery. The reason our, our plants always look so great, we go through about once a month. It's kind of the insider tr secret, but we go through once a month and we just, we take this leaf shine. We just go through and we wipe the leaves. Really effective. It makes them look like brand new plants. Now, really effective on, on like Dracaenas, uh, anything with a larger leaf to it, uh, ZZ plants, uh, uh, palms, uh, not so much on cactus because, well, they're hard to wipe down. Those you kind of hose down. But take a look at your house plants. Don't forget them. Don't ignore them. I know we're inside eating hot, you know, sipping hot chocolate and enjoying the holidays, but some things to watch for the next few weeks. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Ouch! Aw oh, man, another rock! Hi, I'm Rusty. You know, the shovel you're destroying trying to dig that hole? Sure, I get it. You got these beautiful plants at Waters Garden Center. Waters asked if they could plant them for you, but no. You had to do it yourself, even though they would plant, deliver, and guarantee your plants for two years. I hope I don't end up like that old pickaxe. Ouch! Prevent yard tool abuse. Waters Garden Center. They plant, deliver, and guarantee. Let's talk poop. Hey, I'm Tommy at Waters Garden Center. 
Ken and Lisa are out right now, so I snuck in to remind you that it's time to add some manure to your garden. It's been a wet winter, and your soil is well pooped. Waters Barnyard Manure adds nutrients to get your garden growing. It's organic and orderless, so we really can say our poop don't stink. Buy six bags or more. They're only $5.99. Now that's a load of crap. Tommy, what's going on? Oh, poop, gotta go. Natural, safe, odorless, and organic at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio, my favorite gal, especially during the holidays, just because we've had so many kids together. It's fun having your kids, our kids home. Yes. And playing with the grandkids and mm-hmm. grand dogs and grand cats and all the other <sighs> things our kids have started to started to build their own homes. Making their own homes. It's kind of fun. Yeah, They're independent. Only fun. a couple are on the payroll still, so well, it's doing pretty good. Well, only one, really. Yeah. Really? Well, you're subsidized. Well, okay. <laughs> I call it a soft launch. Okay. So they kind of go on their own. They, you need supplementing every once in a while. And they yeah. fully launch kind of in their mid to late 20s. They're kind of all on their own. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'm noticing as kids get to their 30s, they're starting to buy dinner for us, which is kind of yeah. really Taco nice. Bell. Well, <laughs> no, we went to a nice restaurant. It was pretty I'm nice. just kidding. And they did good. Proud of oh, them. Oh, they're great kids. They All of them work hard. And yeah. They're super kids. Super kids. Proud of them. So you hear that? Proud of you. They never listen. I know. That's that's <laughs> dad's thing. Why would we want a lesson? <laughs> Half the world's listening, but if it's your parents, uh, <laughs> it's no good. So this is all about your your question, just your garden thoughts. What's mm-hmm. going on garden-wise in your mind? What do you think would be <laughs> interesting? In my mind? <laughs> well, did I say that wrong? It's just different. Oh. I haven't heard that one yet. Okay. You usually say your world, your neighborhood, but in my mind, that leaves it <laughs> <a> wide open. <laughs> Get creative with me. Let's do it. <laughs> well, what is on my mind is so the holidays are over. If you're like me, you've already got the tree dismantled and sitting out on the front. <laughs> you are ruthless. <laughs> Dead. When the season's over, the switch's done, it's out of here. I am. I just am done. We used to have Patty Conrad. She worked for us for years and years and years and years. She would get a cut tree every year. She would make that sucker last until Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm you like, could Patty, do it. are you serious? She's like, yeah, I decorate it for Valentine's Day and then I throw it out. Oh. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> Our poinsettias are out on the front patio, like, uh, and they don't they don't like to go below like fifty degrees because oh, they're no, dead they the first night. Long. They're out like the twenty sixth. They're yeah. done. We're bringing in other other house plants. This is the Christmas cactus. I want to keep that. It's still in bloom. Well, the Christmas cactus is different. A poinsettia once it's out of bloom, it is ugly. Yeah, it it's starts just to fade. Ugly. There's yeah. no there's no way to even think about a poinsettia being pretty once those blooms are gone. You would just kill it like that. You're, I'm, I'm you're so mean. I know. And, uh, but plants not. that would bloom. I mean, people have Christmas cactuses that are like 100 years old. I would never yeah. just throw that away. Sure. But yeah, so we've, we've, we're have we cleaning up. We're resetting. There is a reason why all the companies have their white sales in January because we're all stuck indoors. And we're yeah. thinking about the indoors and what we can do indoors. Yeah. I wonder if paint sales go up. Huh. And, you know, I got a buddy I can call. He would know. He could tell me. He could tell me just what's going on the local on the local market. Because yeah, you just sit there looking at the walls, going, "I should paint these." It's been two years. <laughs> but we think about redoing our homes, and one of the things that we can add to our home that uh, I just think adds a lot of terrific benefit to our lives is house plants. Okay, great. Yeah, very. You know, whether the, you want to go with the cleans the air or not, I could go either way on it. I mean, mentally, I like that concept, so I'll go with it. But um, just having that green in your house, giving you something to take care of, to touch, to water, uh, I think has a lot of benefits to it. I like to name our house plants. You do? Yeah, so uh, it's a living, breathing thing in your house. It's not just a plant. I mean, it's something that's vibrant. It's taking up space. It's interacting Mm -hmm. with its environment, with you, with you. 
It's whether it's cleans the air or not, or what it's a living, breathing thing that yeah. creates companionship for for some. If they don't get out a lot, they just mm-hmm. it's it's a great thing. Health, there's some health benefits. Oh, definitely health to to plants, not yeah. just lungs and everything. It's mental and everything. Mental, else. you betcha. So and there's a lot of great house plants out there. You know, there are some that we call for beginner house plants yeah. because. They're the ones I love. You barely have to look at them. You water them maybe every two weeks. If maybe that, yeah. not. <laughs> That's if we remember. <laughs> yeah. That ZZ plant down in the yes. TV room. Oh, my gosh. It yeah. never gets scared for. Never, ever. And it looks beautiful. It has a really glossy green, green leaf to it and just keeps growing and growing. And we hardly ever pay attention to that wow. thing. So the ZZ plant, plant, which stands for Zamzifolias, blah, 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 blah. I can't remember the rest part of it. ZZ is the quick for it. But yeah, if you travel a lot, if you think you're not good with houseplants, if you think you have a room that's too dark for houseplants, uh, ZZs are your plant because they are super easy. Yeah. The other one is the Sansevieria, which also goes by mother-in-law's tongue or snake plant. Uh, that's another one that maybe every three weeks she would water it, yeah. um, especially this time of year. There again, it can take low light. It can take bright light. Um, just It's one of those ones that's great for up on a shelf that maybe you can't oh, get sure. to all the time. That's a good idea. Uh, because it, you just don't have to fuss with it very much. And the thing I like about that whole group of plants is they come in all kinds of colors and sizes. And some are really tall. They have some that are more like a bird's nest ones, they call them, that definitely stay a little shorter, a little more compact. So it's just a really great group of plants to to play Why with. Why do they call it snake plant? Does it come with a snake? I mean, what is that? That's like I think because the regular snake plant is just tall and thin. Oh, so it looks like has a, a curl or something to it or it's a little bit of a wave, huh. but it's just more Interesting. I don't know. Why do they How call it mother in law's tongue? Huh? No Where'd idea. that come My from? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> As a mother in law, I resent yeah, that. Yeah, that's name. right. I resemble that plant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So those, are, of course, those are a couple super easy ones. The other ones I would throw in that would be Dracaena. Oh, yeah. Uh, there again, lots of variety of Dracaena. All of them are low water use, moderate light, just super easy to take care of. Some of those are bigger, too. So mm-hmm. you can. So when you take that Christmas tree on the curb on the 1st, you if you can feel that in your room. You're going, oh, it's just something's missing. So mm-hmm. we houseplant sales do go up. Kind, oh, of, yeah. kind of like paint does probably. Mm-hmm. Goes <laughs> up in January because yeah. people are just, they're indoors. Mm-hmm. They're bored. They need something for the house. And gardeners just, I mean, you can only do so much with a seed catalog or yeah. seed site. Uh, and then you kind of go, nope, I just want to go touch and feel and roam around the new houseplants. Yeah. Uh, sedums. So sedums are really fun because if, especially for gardeners, if you like uh, to try your own starts, get a few sedums and then start doing some starts with them and get more growing. Um, Just super easy, super fun, different colors, different shapes, different textures. You can put three or four in a pot, um, do it individually. I mean, so versatile that you can do anything with them. And that's fun. I mean, houseplants, actually, they're tropical plants. Mm -hmm. They're super easy to get a cutting or a start. Mm -hmm. I mean, on on almost all of these. Uh, But there's there's a certain angle you got to cut them, 45 degrees. There's a there's a rooting powder that you dip them in, and there's a certain kind of soil, kind of seedling mix. But if you do that, and and if you want to try having your having fun with that, come talk to us. We can walk you right through the process. Mm -hmm. It's almost guaranteed every time. If you don't overwater them, you tend to we call it damping off. They just start rotting because they're too wet. All of a sudden, the roots. To try to form and then they just go it's too wet i can't mm-hmm. i can't grow in a bog <laughs> it's this fine tune tuning to yeah how much you water a cutting or oh, a definitely, seedling definitely aloe plants i think oh, yeah. every home needs an aloe plant because if you're like me if you I'm, okay i'm not the best chef or cook in the world i'm always burning my hand <laughs> on a plate or an oven uh wonderful to have in the kitchen just cut a little end off dab that gel uh on your burns, it's amazing. Sunburns I'm, works. I'm really making good notes right now. Stocking stuffer for 2020 <laughs> Christmas new uh, oven mitts. Oven mitts, yeah. <laughs> I think they should look like lobster claws or something fun. I don't know. Puppy dogs. I could do schnauzers. That. But yeah, aloe. There again, hardly takes any water. Put it in your kitchen. It's just there. It's ready for whenever you need it or want it. Yeah, it's super. 
a couple more plants I'm just going to mention really quick that are some of my favorites. Of course, the pothos plant, if you want a nice, easy hanging plant, comes in light greens, dark greens, variegated, you name it, spathophyllum, otherwise known as peace lily. Beautiful when it blooms, adds wonderful color to the home. Great choices. And we, we bulk up in January with houseplants mm-hmm. just because people are going to be out. And yeah. there's not as much growing. We don't have a lot of perennials, a few. Mm-hmm. don't have a lot of herbs. we got a few. But we have a lot of houseplants because right. that's the one that takes the pressure, gets mm-hmm. has the most interest right now. Lots of wildflowers. Sure. The seed mix. Uh, I mean, vegetable seeds for 2020, they're in. So, yeah. all right. Well, have a happy new year, everyone. We'll be right back with Kennelly Slane and the Mountain Gardeners. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. My living room feels so empty. Now that the Christmas tree is gone, the house just seems so blah. Brighten it up with a big, bold, beautiful plant from Waters Garden Center. Fill that cavernous space with tall tropicals, colossal cactus, and sizable succulents that bring the great outdoors indoors. Make a gorgeous green space you can enjoy all year, not just for a season. Unique, exclusive, one-of-a-kind houseplants found only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. You know, I had mentioned when I started the show that I've finished my pruning of perennials. The annuals, as they die off, I get rid of them. Now, remember, perennials and permanent both start with peas. So these are plants that come back year after year after year. And so I've got some asparagus beds, you know, rhubarb, uh, strawberries. They all come back year after year. That's a perennial vegetable or edible. You've also got perennial flowers like echinaceas, galardias. We're famous for our mountain wildflowers that just keep coming back year after year. If if the annuals die off, I just pull them out right away and go, here, I'm replacing that with pansies or some kale or something that looks good. The rest of the things, I just prune them back so I know just really what I'm trying to do is expose them to winter. I want the cold to permeate down in there and kill off any bugs, to get rid of uh, the mildews and molds and leaf spots. I want to expose them to the cold. They're already hibernating. They're below ground by six, seven, eight inches. They're sitting there waiting to go. They're growing. They're growing a flower already. So, So your iris... That flower is already in that large rhizome. It's just waiting for the temperature. It's temperature struck. It's just certain temperature. They go, okay, growing. Boom, and they start to send off that flower. Well, most of your perennials are that way. They've either already formed or are still forming their flower of spring. And so by exposing that top growth to cold, you, you, you mitigate a lot of issues in the gardens. I, I pruned back all of those. I didn't really have any real real insect issues. I didn't, I'm not doing it to that, but it's my preventative. I keep them from coming out at me by exposing them to winter. The cold, that freeze and thaw, just gets rid of insects. I've, one time I was helping a customer, I was diagnosing their tree, and they were having aphids and stuff. And I just haven't gone, what is going on with this thing? It's just not putting leaves on. It didn't bloom very well. What is happening? So I dug down to the leaf litter right at the base of this tree. And underneath this, about an inch underneath the, the, the old leaves that had been gathered around there, I came into a colony of literally had to be thousands. I mean, the ground was crawling. It was freaky. But that's where bugs hang out when it's cold. 
if you know that, let's expose them to some, go some, some cold. We want that ground to freeze solid for at least an inch or two. That gets rid of all those, those insects. They're hibernating. They're like cold-blooded insects waiting to come out when the spring springtime comes. Well, I don't want that. I want them to be obliterated by the cold. Then I'll come back at them when I finally get done pruning back really all of my trees, the shrubs, butterfly bush. You got to prune those things back or they become the size of like small buildings. They're, they get too big. So they really cut back and that it will also eliminate some of the the spider mite issues that you might see on those just helps. You'll get better flowers on them. And so you should cut those back now. That's a summer blooming thing. Anything that blooms in the summer, prune them back over the next, I don't know, eight, nine, ten weeks. It's a big window, but take your time and, and slowly go through it. And really the reason I did it is I had a lot of capacity in my trash can this week. And so the Russian sage got pulled. They got cut back hard. And I really don't want to chip those up. They, I mean, they're just, they smell like sage. My nostrils just go crazy with this sage scent. So I just cut them back, shoved them in the trash can. Going, That's good. The perennials, I actually compost and I mulch. You know, those are finer, finer bits. It's not real woody kind of stuff. So it's more leaves and old flowers. And so I, I tend to mulch those things up. The woody things, I just throw in the trash can. So as I get through winter and I've got trash can capacity, I go through and I'll take a few bushes at a time. And then it's not a burden. It's just not a burdensome thing to go through and prune out your, your plants. When I'm all done, usually I'll be done by in the next three, four weeks. End of, end of January for sure. I'm done pruning. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll spray the entire yard with a horticultural oil. That's just I'll pick a nice day when it's not too windy, and I'll just hose down everything. And what I'm doing with that oil, it's organic, it's inexpensive, and I can do the whole yard in one foul swoop, hit everything. It's not strategic, just hit everything. I'm spraying the base of the tree, getting those aphid colonies that are maybe hanging out. It didn't quite get them all to any kind of egg that was laid on that plant last fall, late summer. I am coming after it with that oil. And I want to kill off any insects or or bug or, or insect eggs that were laid uh, last fall or summer, and that way I go into spring completely clean. I mean, things can fly in at me, but but there at least my yard is is bug free mostly. I mean, there's no way to take them all out, but you can really thin the numbers where it's it's in your. If errors are in your favor. I mean, aphids are going to take over. The thrip are going to take over your yard. The Those early spring bugs, at least you start out clean. This is really important for your for your fruiting, flowering trees. Uh, in, you know, apples, pears, cherries, apricots, nectarines, cherry plums, all of those. It's also really important for uh, your flowering trees and larger shrubs, lilacs, your, your red buds, um, what else? Crab apples. Man, I can just go right down the list. There's a lot of them. Just if in doubt, spray it with horticultural or all-season oil. Uh, your, your grandparents call it dormant oil. We don't quite use dormant. We've gotten more strategic with the oils than that anymore. We're, I, I sell one that's put together by Bonide. It's, it's called all-season spray. It's a lighter-grade oil, which really plays out better for us in the mountains where it's real warm days, cold nights. We can get so warm, sometimes you put a heavy, heavy like dormant oil, you can burn off that new foliage or buds. Well, the all season spray is a lighter, thinner oil. And so it's less likely to do damage if we happen to bump up in that 70, 80 degree weather. Uh, you know, a, a week to 10 days after you've sprayed that, you're not gonna do any damage. Whereas dormant oil, it's more for Midwest. It's cold and it stays there and I'm going to spray everything. It's a, it's a heavier, thicker oil. And so I find folks make less mistakes. That's just school of hard knocks. And so for me and my customers, I'm trying to guide them. And I just offer them less choices. I'm going, this is the one I use. This is the one you want to use. If you're living at this central highlands, you know, the Prescott, Prescott Valley, anywhere in this Yavapai County area, you want to use this one. Trust me. And, and over the years, I've just found that out. And, and the pruning advice I'm giving you, that's just things I've learned over the decades of, of gardening 
If you prune back your roses too soon, literally I've made this mistake. If you prune back roses right now, which is what the deserts do, uh, Southern California, Palm Springs, Tucson, they prune them back right now. I've done that. And then we get a real cold winter into January, 1st of February. And so you've got these stubs of a cane. It gets cold, burns those stubs back even more. It can permeate right down through the cane and then into the graft. So you can literally lose a rose or you stunt it back to like, like below beginning. You're, you're beyond step one. You're to negative two. So you've got to grow all these new canes back. It's just better to... It's been my experience. It's better to wait till March to prune back those roses, keep that those canes up, and so it protects that heart of that plant. Get through the coldest month, January at least. When I made my mistake, I pruned it back first of February. I thought, oh, the weather's so nice. We're good to go. I'm pruning them now because I want to. And then it got really cold the middle of February, and then it it took back some of the canes, didn't kill the rose bush, but it took back some of the canes. I'm going, oh, great. Here I am. I know better, but I was just impatient. Just wait till March and prune them back. Same with salvias. There's a few things. Probably your crepe myrtles that way. There's certain things that are just better to hold off. Just a school of heart. Just trust me. And that's probably all elevation. I know you're tuned in from all over northern Arizona. It's the same in Kingman. I would hold off. You can get that cold wind that comes through, and if you prune back too early, it'll, it'll kill. It can do some more damp winter damage. Uh, so just, well, all the way to the White Mountains. I mean, there, there, it's a little colder, longer, easier. Flagstaff, Williams, that next seven thousand foot level is a little easier. But us in this Central Highlands, this four to six thousand foot level, thirty five hundred foot, wherever that is, we're, we're four seasons, but it's real mild. You get tempted to start early, but we're st we can still get cold. And so just kind of school of hard knocks, sharing. My name's Ken. We're just friends talking over the airwaves. This has really played out in my gardens for me. But take your time. Enjoy the holidays and prune whenever you'd like. Be right back with a few more tips after this. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Red Clusterberry Cotone Aster. Stunning white flowers cover the shrub in spring, then form red berries. A large evergreen that is tough, easy to grow, and tolerates poor soil. So thick when sheared, it's the perfect privacy for hot tubs, secluded entertainment areas, and prying eyes for just $39. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love red-berried Ketoniaster, they love to shop. You're in the area with your dream home on the inside, but surrounded by boring? A castle surrounded by rock is just so bland, but we can help. At Waters, we have a team of plant experts ready to dress up and decorate even the most boring of landscapes with something fresh, new, and evergreen. Plus, we deliver and plant for you. Designer plants with the experts to help you beautify your new abode. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've tuned in to the Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lang. Now I have given my staff between Christmas and New Year's off. I mean, a garden center is a little bit slower. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to lose a little bit of business, but it's slower and I can, I can afford to give my staff some time off. And so I, I let them take that, that. We're closed that week. I think the second we open right back up. So we're frantically doing a lot of work before we we were just frantic getting things done. So it's almost like not worth taking a vacation because you work so hard just to get the few days off. But with the team, it was working well together. And so we we're having lots of fudge and chocolates and cakes and all that holiday stuff here at the shop and at home. Uh, but we were also doing some 2020 work as well. We added like 2,000 square feet of pavers. Uh, we've got brand new beds laid out. So it's, some of it was very physical, but also we planned our, our garden classes. So those are in the can for next spring. We, we'll put the actual form, 8.5 by 11, you know, whole sheet there. 
Uh, that'll be ready as soon as we reopen in January. But right now they're posted online, watersgardencenter.com. You'll see a big classes button. You screen, scroll to the next page down. There it is. Uh, but I thought I would share a couple of those. And they start January 11. I can't believe we are already here in January. But healthy, happy houseplants. You know, at least it was talking about houseplants. We'll show those which ones are the best, how to mix them together, how to get better gardening, how to re repot, what to fertilize with, all those things to make a happy houseplant with some professional style. That will be January 11th. That's a Saturday at 9.30. It'll be in the back greenhouse. Then it's uh, uh, top local landscapes with flair. How do you put together a great design? If you've got a backyard that's an empty slate, Now's the time to start planting that. And I would say you could even put a few trees. You get your core plantings done. Uh, maybe even do some of the hardscapes, the, the patios and the raised beds. And then you're ready for the vegetables. You're ready for the flowers. You're ready for the rose garden, whatever that's going to be. But you can definitely put evergreen trees in now. You can put the, your fruit trees in. You can, put, you can plant right now. You're okay. So we'll go over that. That's a January 18th at 930 again. And then I think this one's going to be a blockbuster. Over 50 people already liked or said they're going to come to the why January is the month to plant wildflowers. That's January 25th. If you want to start wildflowers from seed in your backyard, that's the one. And it keeps going from there. So I can't, it's hard to believe the New Year's here, 2020 is here, the hot, Christmas is done in the can, Hanukkah is just, it's virtually done in a couple more days. I mean, this is it. Uh, there's nothing really. This is when you kind of you slowly go out and clean things up. One thing to watch, if we don't get, I know we've got some moisture with this storm system. If it goes for two, three weeks without another storm system, make sure you're taking the edge off those houseplants. I know it seems counterintuitive, but it's okay. It's good to water those plants, especially your evergreen hedges. Photinias, Eliagnus, Euonymus, uh, Cotoniasters. If those things go dry and we get a real cold snap, it will take the tops of those right out. So it'll burn them right off. And so if you'd simply hydrate those a couple times a week, if it goes over two, three weeks without any kind of real moisture, go out and manually water those things. It will be a game changer But next spring. I'm telling you, it'll play out. And you can see next spring which ones went dry, which ones were hydrated and fertilized. You, you can tell. Uh, just that's one little tip I can give you that'll really make a change now in January. And these coldest month is right here. It'll really make a difference in how healthy your, your, your plants will be next spring. It'll keep those buds growing. You'll get better flowers on things. It's just it, two to three weeks. Don't let them go without water longer than that. And you'll be a healthy, happy gardener next spring. Happy New Year, everyone. Wish you and yours a blessed, happy, and prosperous 2020. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.